Hello and welcome to the Chemistry Academy. In this video, we're going to look over the pH of salt solutions, which is relevant to the Advanced Higher Chemistry course. So when salts dissolve in water, the pH isn't always exactly 7, and it depends what the salt is. So a lot of this ties in with your knowledge of equilibrium as well, um, and specifically the water equilibrium. So just to bear in mind that water will dissociate into ion form and it will form the hydronium ion HCO positive and hydroxide ion OH minus um, that's essentially the same as when we looked at national 5 and looked at the water dissociating to form hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions but as you learn at higher hydrogen ions are not stable enough to exist on their own in solution so they um, attach themselves to a water molecule to form the HCO positive ion which is known as hydronium so when it comes to the pH of salt solutions, the pH you end up with is related to how and if the salt that you have disrupts the water equilibrium in any way. So when you've got um, a salt solution, and so for example, we take the first example, sodium chloride, the effect it's going to have on the water equilibrium depends on what the acid and base that were used to make the salt were. So you want to look at is that salt made from a strong acid and a strong base or is it made from a weak acid and a strong base and you get the idea. So when you have a salt that's been made with a strong acid and a strong base like sodium chloride so that could be made from sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid the pH of your salt solution will be 7. So if you've got a salt that's been made from a strong acid, strong base when it dissolves in water the pH will be 7. This is because the ions fully dissociate, so they float around as free ions, they don't form any equilibriums of their own, and therefore there's no disruption to the water equilibrium. It stays um, with equal concentrations of hydronium ions, hydroxide ions, which is what gives you a pH of 7. So if you've got a salt from made from a strong acid, strong base, then you won't have an effect on the water equilibrium because the ions fully dissociate and therefore your pH is going to be 7. So that's a pretty straightforward one. We get to the more complicated ones now. So this is where you've got something weak, like a weak acid or a weak base involved in the formation of the salt. So if you have a weak acid and a strong base, like for example sodium ethanoate, so we could propose that that was made from sodium hydroxide and ethanoic acid, ethanoic acid that makes it end in ethanoate. So that's a weak acid. The salt solution will have a pH of above 7. So without having to remember why this is the case, you can remember what the pH is and if you think of it as like a tug of war. So if they're both strong, the acid and the base, the pH will be in the middle at 7. If the acid is weaker than the base, then the base is going to be stronger and pull the pH up towards it, which would be like pH above 7, obviously. If we then look at the strong acid-weak base combination, the acid is stronger than the base, so that pulls the pH below 7. So if you can't remember what's going on with the equilibrium, you can at least remember that, and it should hopefully give you um, one mark out of two in those three questions that are on the pH of salt solutions. Okay, so think of it as a tag of war, whichever one's stronger is going to win and it's going to pull the pH to its side of 7. But if we look at what's going on with the equilibriums, so it's like I said, it's always the weak one that causes the disruption to the water equilibrium. So in the case of the sodium ethanoate, it's going to be the ethanoate ions that's going to cause the problem. So sodium ethanoate dissociates to give you the ethanoate ion, which is the CH3COO minus, and then you also get sodium ions. Now the sodium ions are just going to go float around on their own as free ions because they don't form um, compounds with anything in solution. They fully dissociate. But the ethanoate is going to end up forming an equilibrium by reacting with hydronium ions in order to form ethanoic acid again and then water. So the ethanoate ion is essentially going to react with hydronium ions in the water which then removes the hydronium ions from the water equilibrium. So this is going to, if I ignore the ones in this uh, equation, 
So these hydronium ions are coming from the water equilibrium. So they're getting removed, which means that then the equilibrium is gonna to shift to the right in order to in favor the forward reaction to remake the hydronium ions that have been lost. But as the equilibrium shifts to the right, it's gonna produce an excess of hydroxide ions. I just realized I've missed the state symbol there. Okay, so in terms of how to write your answer, you would want to mention whichever the ion is that's associated with the weak acid. So it could be ethanoate, it could be propanoate, it could be methanoate. That ion is going to react with hydronium ions to form the acid molecule. That means then hydronium ions are removed from the water equilibrium, therefore the equilibrium shifts to the right, giving you an excess of hydroxide ions which then pushes the pH to above 7, makes it alkaline. Okay, so that's what's going on when you've got a weak acid involved in your salt. If we then look at the strong acid weak base combination, so the weak base you'll normally come across is ammonia, which means any salts of ammonia contain ammonium, so you want to look out for ammonium. And the ammonium chloride, as an example of this, the salt of a weak base, that would dissociate to give you ammonium and chloride. And chloride ions will just float around as free ions, not really doing anything because they fully dissociate. But the ammonium ions will form an equilibrium and where it will react with hydroxide ions in order to form ammonia and water. Now remember, because the weak things don't fully dissociate, this is why you get these equilibriums forming because they don't just float around on their own as free ions they will form these equilibriums where they're partially dissociating um, and then partially forming the, the molecule. So the ammonium reacts with hydroxide, giving you ammonia and water. Because the ammonia is reacting with hydro ammonium, sorry, is reacting with hydroxide, that's going to remove the hydroxide ions from the water equilibrium which again means the equilibrium is going to shift to the right, but this time it's going to then give us an excess of hydronium ions, which then makes the pH lower than 7, because the pH is all to do with the concentration of hydronium ions. And the higher the concentration of hydronium ions, the lower the pH will be. Okay, so in terms of explaining the answer when you've got the salt with a weak base involved in it, is that the ammonium, which is normally always the only one you'll come across, Ammonium ions will react with hydroxide ions in water to produce NH3 and H2O. Therefore, the hydroxide ions are removed from the water equilibrium, so the water equilibrium shifts to the right, and therefore an excess of hydronium ions are produced that brings the pH to below 7. Okay, so these questions, there's usually like one of them in every exam, um, and they'll usually mention something about why does the why is the solution of sodium methanoate alkaline or why is the solution of sodium uh, ammonium chloride uh, acidic? So this is the explanations you want to give. It is helpful to write down the equations for the equilibriums that are being established. So you can just like, remember these ones. For the weak acid, it would just be the ion, the conjugate base ion as it is, uh, that would end up changing depending on what acid you have. Um, and then writing the water equilibrium as well, just showing which ion has been removed. Okay. So I hope that helps you with the pH of salt solutions. If you did find this useful, please give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe, tell all your chemistry friends, and I'll see you again soon.